there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. <laughs> What's up? So some of you are finally coming out of lockdown and your lives are starting to go back to normal. <laughs> Huzzah. How exciting. And that means we're gonna be going back to church real soon. And with church comes the old greeting time. But things have changed. We can no longer greet each other the same old way because of germs and stuff like that. And we don't wanna risk going back in quarantine again. <laughs> that was rough. <sighs> real rough. I'm killing you, I'm killing you. Well, have no fear. Us here at Sunday Cool have put together a couple of post-quarantine greetings. And these greetings will not only make your friends feel reunited, <laughs> but they'll also make them feel safe. And safety is my number four priority. Don't ask me about the other three. Okay, I'll tell you. Number three, eat more cantaloupes. Stay away from antelopes. Number two, if you have corduroy, wear it. Number one, if you have AA batteries, keep them in your pocket, because you'll never know we need a AA battery. <laughs> okay, let's watch these greetings. Hey, how's it going? How you doing good? You doing good? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Hello, Andy. Hello, Carl. How are you today? Good, you? Good. Oh, no. What's I happening? I think we are shutting down. Oh, no. I was just beginning to love. Hey, Carl. Hi, Andy. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, Andy. Hey, Carl. How's it going? Not bad. Can't cool. complain. I could, but who'd listen? <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah, me either. Hey, Carl, put it there. Za. Za. Yellow. And then I said, that's not a toaster, that's my wife. <laughs> That's incredibly inappropriate. It's a joke. Hey, Andy. Hey, Carl. Jess Buck? Sure. Okay. You okay? Let me help you. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Hello, Andy. Hey, man. How's it going? Fine. All right, good seeing you. Yeah, good seeing you. Hey, Carl. Hey, Andy. What are you doing? I'm a dinosaur. Ah. I get that, but like, why? Uh, they ran a mask. So you bought a dinosaur costume instead? Yeah. Okay. Well, good seeing you. Good seeing you. Take it easy. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey everyone, we are about to play a game with our friend Ashton Collins. And Ashton, I don't have friends. Well, well I'm your friend, and that's and that's I think important. And uh, we are going to play a game entitled. Usually, usually it comes sooner, and that it's. Yeah, this is this game is entitled Haiku Movie. Haiku Movie. Here's how this game works. This is a pretty simple game. Uh, I'm going to share a haiku, uh, and you have to tell me what haiku is the movie describing. Do you know what a haiku is, Ashton? No. Okay. Uh, a, a English lesson. Uh, haiku is a poem. Uh, that has five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the next line, and five syllables in the last line. Um, I, I, you'll figure this one out as, as we go. I, I, I should have had a haiku ready to go as a joke, but I don't. Here's your first haiku. 
He sure knows his clocks, but that can't be the key to finding family. I don't like this game. What is what is the movie it's describing? Um, Back to the Future. That's a good guess. Incorrect. Hugo is the answer, but I think I've never watched that movie. I haven't either, but I think I think Back to the Future is a really good is is a really good way to describe that movie. Uh, second second term. Uh, by the way, I, I love this Zoom background. Uh, shout out to Download Youth Industry for making a time person of the year with the, with baby yoda in the background um so here we go next one there's a boy who lived protected by mother's love the dark lord he kills hey, Potter. that is correct you're one for one uh now we're going to question three my uncle found it weapon of the enemy i lost a finger um Um, this sounds like no movie I've ever watched. Um, I don't know, James. Actually, I'm so sad. It's Lord of the Rings. My, Ew. Uncle, my uncle found it, weapon of the enemy, and spoiler alert, Frodo loses a finger. All right. You're two for, you're, you're, it's, it's okay. You're one for, uh, one for three. I think you, you still have a good shot at, at this. Uh, Dread Pirate Roberts tries to save his beloved. True love always wins. The Princess Bride? That is correct. The Princess Bride. Wav. Pro wav. It's why we'll gather here today. Uh, this one. His daughter is gone, and they are going to pay a one-man army. Taken? Taken is correct. I don't know who you are or where you're from, but I will find you. Next one. Just a farmer boy, an adventure far from home. He's the only hope. Star Wars. Yes, absolutely. Star Wars: A New Hope. Yeah, which I would, I would. Yeah, Star Wars was the original name of it. Like A New Hope was added on later, very much like Live Die Repeat was, and the title added on later. Next one, just obey the rules. His brain needs no retraining. Normal guy saves world. Um. I don't know. Well, everything is awesome in the Lego movie. He's just, remember Emmett just tries to obey the rules and he does not need retraining of his brain. Here we go. I haven't seen that movie in, since it came out, James. Everything is awesome. In a cold, cold place, everything just got colder. There's always snowmen. Frozen? Frozen is correct. Uh, next one. Once during the night, Things suddenly came to life. Blame Egyptian prince. The Indian in the cupboard? This is a good guess, but no. Uh, Night at the museum. Remember the, 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 like, the little Indian, the, the, not Indian, the, the uh, thing that he has, the, the Egyptian prince, that's what brings everything to life. All right, here we go. Uh, question number 10. Three men go fishing. But the boat is undersized. Two men swim away. Jaws? Jaws is correct because I think we need a bigger boat. All right. Last one. Last one. This, we'll say that this is the game breaker. Uh, I've been keeping score. But last one. Robots move the track. Wow. There we go. One stumbles on a green plant. Will the humans change? Wally is correct. Well done. Yay! Thank you, Ashton, for participating uh, in in our haiku movie game, and and we'll get we'll get you your prize for. for oh, another one? No, not another one. I'll just make it bigger. That's that's what we'll do. All right, but, but it'll, it'll be the it'll be the it'll be the bag. So like, uh, uh, thank you, Ashton, for playing, and uh, I hope everything is going well with you.
you too, James. Later, man. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome to our Wednesday night live stream at First Baptist State City. We are thankful that, that you are joining with us in our student worship tonight. I know it's difficult. I miss you guys. We, we want to meet back together soon, uh, and we will talk more about that, of how that's going to look in the near future. Uh, but uh, for the time being, we are still meeting through the internet. Uh, so at, if, if you can, uh, post a comment that, to let us know that you're watching. Share this video on your, on your feeds uh, to, to invite people to come and watch uh, with us. Uh, we want to uh, make this a an opportunity for you to invite your friends in a way that you probably weren't able to do before. Just sharing a link, just sharing a a, a video is a lot easier uh, than than bringing someone physically to the church. Uh, but we we think that God is 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 still working in the lives of our students. I want to uh, remind you that uh, we finished our 30 challenge, which we were uh, spending 30 days. Uh, for the last 30 days in scripture. And now we have moved to a new devotional called Miracles in Motion. Uh, it's a devotional of the first 14 chapters uh, in Exodus. If you have not uh, gotten the PDF, uh, we will put that PDF link down in the comments uh, in, in the in the YouTube description. Uh, but every day we are posting a YouTube video and a, a social media image to remind you about uh, the uh, the devotional that we're doing, and we're trying to encourage of how God still works miracles even when things look bad, even when things look at their worst. Uh, but join with us each each day. We are uh, posting a video, uh, reading through the book of Exodus. Uh, if you can catch up, again, it's one chapter a day. So if you if you've fallen behind, you can catch up really quickly. Uh, but we want you to join in as we continue to engage God's word together. So now I, I wanted to share with you uh, one of the things that we did uh, earlier to uh, this this last week was we played a game called uh, Masterpiece Theater, uh, and I want to congratulate Isaac Witten for submitting uh, his winning bid, uh, his winning picture. Uh, again, this is the the image that he uh, was trying to emulate, and this is the picture uh, that uh, he submitted as the recreation of that. Uh, we will uh, still do that through Instagram, so uh, we'll post some uh, some. Uh, more uh, pictures on Instagram that, that you can uh, re, uh, recreate and we will share the best uh, of those. Uh, but thank you for, for participating. Uh, again, this, I know it's a weird time. Uh, we just want to stay connected as best we can. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, now transition uh, into our worship. Uh, Pastor Stephen is is going to lead us once again uh, in song. So uh, I know it's weird. I know it's, it's, it's different. Uh, but this is the time when we can join together in song. So wherever you are, uh, join with us as we worship God together through song. Let's pray as we prepare our hearts. God, I thank you for this time that we have together. God, I pray that uh, that in this moment, in this time, that that you can uh, that settle our hearts, help us to focus on your word, help us to focus on on your promises. And God, as as Pastor Stephen leads us to the throne of worship, God, I pray that that you will do a mighty work through uh, our YouTube page, through the internet, uh, God, because we can still worship together and sing of how great you are. So God, I pray that you'll settle our hearts to focus our minds uh, and, and to be with us in our time of worship tonight. God, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
When I was in college, I started my journalism career by submitting stories to different papers. You really don't just start in one place. You kind of have to get your name out there through freelance. So what I would do is I would work as a stringer, work, uh, reporting some high school football games for the local paper in Jackson, Tennessee. But I'll also have to uh, send my stories and see if they would get picked up by other papers. And when you got picked up, there was a real excitement about it. As you can imagine, it's, it's really cool to have your name in a newspaper. So some of my stories were picked up by different publications. I, I had a sports opinion piece that was picked up by the Baptist Press. I, I had a story on Tennessee bivocational pastors that was picked up in the Baptist Press in, in Tennessee. And, and these stories like were such a joy to me because I felt such accomplishment. And I would do what you would typically do is, is you would hold up the paper and you would take a, a picture and say, hey, look, look what, ha look what happened to me. And there'll be some joy in this sense of accomplishment. And it's okay to feel joy in this accomplishment, but the thing about news 
is that it's news and not olds. So you would get a sense of pride and joy for the work that you put in, but it doesn't last forever. Because eventually the newspaper that had my name on it, that had my work put into it, would be thrown away by a reader. And eventually the story that was posted online would just get buried in a newsfeed. It wouldn't last forever. Eventually, the accomplishments that I had would begin to fade away. And it's not a bad thing to rejoice in it, but it's not lasting. So tonight, I want to help you fight against a temptation that we could easily give into, especially when we approach the end of a school year. You see, once you've finished the school year, you will have accomplished something that's unprecedented in the lives of middle school and high schoolers. You will have done something that I have not done. In the middle of your school year, you had to adjust to a life of distant learning. And this is an incredible accomplishment. You should feel that uh, accomplished that you had to make this transition. You did something that other generations before you have not done. This is a really cool thing. And, and after you're finished with it, you can look back and say, man, I, I, I did adjust. I was able to make it through. And so you will get a report card and, and you will look at the report card. And you may celebrate the good grades you have. You may be frustrated that the, you didn't reach your goals. But you will have some accomplishments at the end of the year that you will be able to rejoice in. However, when we celebrate in these accomplishments, it's tempting to make it all about us. We try to sometimes give ourselves glory. If you watch last week, last week we talked about how scripture says that our lives were not meant to give ourselves glory, but rather to give God all the glory. So we can be tempted to celebrate in such a way that points people to us rather than point people to God. So how do we avoid this type of temptation? If you have your Bible, I would invite you to open with me to the book of Luke. We're looking at Luke chapter 10. And before we read a passage, we're going to give some little context to what's happening. Because in Luke 9, Jesus is calling disciples. He's calling people to follow him. That he is, is, It's not just the 12. He's calling other people to follow him. But when he is calling people, when he is uh, getting more followers, he's making sure that people understand the cost. Because in order to follow Jesus, it's not simply an addition to your life. Following Jesus means absolute surrender. And some people weren't able to live up to this expectation. They, they weren't willing to give everything for the call. And Jesus turns them away. And so Jesus is making sure that people that are following him are surrendering. Not just simply trying to follow for their own glory or for their own measure. So what happens in Luke chapter 10 is when he receives a bunch of these sold out, surrendered, gung-ho followers... He sends 72 missionaries out to preach to the cities and surrounding areas to preach the gospel, to preach of the good news that Jesus has come, and to uh, heal the sick and, and cast out demons. This is an incredible task. And so he sends out these 72. He gives them instructions. He says, hey, if they welcome you, you do, uh, you being uh, a good guest and you preach, but if they don't welcome you, that's fine. You 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 walk away. You you make sure that you preach the good news and you do as I've commanded you. And here's what's amazing. These 72 men did just that. And what Jesus said would happen, happened. These 72 are able to heal the sick. They're able to cast out demons. They're able to preach this good news of Jesus, the Messiah, is here. Repent and believe for the Messiah has come. These 72 men become miracle workers. And they're preachers in these small towns. I mean, imagine for a second that you're commissioned with little training to be a preacher and a, a doctor without without really, really medical training. And you're able just to cast out demons, but in the name of Jesus, and miracles will be done when you speak. That's amazing to think about. And so these 72 men were faithful and God moved in their lives. So now we get to verse 17, where the 72 come back to Jesus and they tell Jesus what happened. 
It says this, the 72 rejo return with joy saying, even Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Verse 18 says, he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given the authority to trample on, on snakes and scorpions and all over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. However, don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So again, what happens is these 72 missionaries come back and they're surprised what happens. It's like that scene in Finding Nemo where Squirt's like telling his dad crush, Dad, did you see it? Did you see what I did? Did you see it? Did you see it? And, and, and Crush is like, you're so totally rock. That's what's happening here is that Squirt is so happy and the, the missionaries are so happy. These 72 appointed men are so happy. And they're like, Jesus, did you see what happened? Are you surprised? And Jesus is happy in them. He is delighted in them. But his response is wanting them to make sure that they understand what is happening. Because Jesus responds about a truth about himself that his disciples needed to hear. He said, I watched Satan fall from heaven. You know, the disciples were surprised that Jesus, that, that Jesus' name was able to cast out these demons. But Jesus says, you know why these demons obey my authority? Because I cast out their boss from the very beginning. Satan is under my control. I cast out Satan. And if I cast out Satan, the de demons are even going to respond to me as well. Jesus wasn't surprised that the 72 missionaries were able to cast out demons. They weren't. He wasn't surprised that they were able to heal the sick. Because Jesus is God and his authority is over all creation. So when Jesus says in verse 19, nothing will harm you. He's reminding his followers of God's protection. He's saying that nothing will, nothing is going to happen to you that is outside the permission of God. So what we see in, in this, in this scripture of nothing, nothing will harm you is that Jesus is saying, nothing is going to happen unless I tell it to happen. God's sovereignty is so that when bad things happen in your life, God isn't surprised. In fact, God allowed it. And it may be frustrating. It may be, uh, it may be uh, concerning, but it is ultimately for God's glory and your good, even if you can't see that. And moving on, Jesus is is telling these 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 disciples, "Hey, nothing nothing is is brought in without my permission. Nothing. You will be safe. You'll be taken care of." But in this verse twenty is where Jesus shows us where the glory should be given, because the authority isn't from us. The, the glory shouldn't be given to us. Jesus says, and don't rejoice that you are able to cast out demons. Rejoice that you're in my kingdom. In other words, don't take credit that you're able to cast out demons. And don't think that this has anything to do with you. Rather, celebrate that God has done the work through you. And that you received his salvation. The Apostle Paul brings this up again in Galatians chapter 6, and verse 14. Paul says, But as for me, I will never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been crucified to me through the cross, and I to the world. Paul had a lot of things he could have bragged about. Here's a guy that wrote half the New Testament. He started churches all over the known world, and he saw lives change for the gospel of Christ. Paul had every reason to give himself a pat on the back. Instead, Paul made sure to give God the glory and credit for everything that happened in his life. Anything that was for personal gain, he considered trash. But anything he gained because of God's grace was credited back to the work of Jesus Christ. One of the things I saw last year was a graduation speech given by a valedictorian where he talked about how hard he worked to receive the honor of valedictorian. And he said he worked hard and worked hard, but, but at the end of the day, once he, he got the honor, once he got the glory and the recognition, there was a moment afterwards where it faded away. Well, he realized, did I work for my glory? Let me show you the, the clip of this graduation speech that really impacted me. I stand before you tonight as the 2019 valedictorian. This time last year, 
I found out that I was in the running for this title. It was then that I decided I wanted it. So, I worked hard for it. I sacrificed for it. And yes, I stressed for it. <laughs> and I got it. And at our senior award ceremony, it felt so good when I heard my name announced with this title. It's so good. For about 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds of my heart racing and my adrenaline pumping. 15 seconds of, yeah, I won. 15 seconds of being at the top of the pile of all my accomplishments. And it felt euphoric. But there must come a 16th second. And on that 16th second, sat down in my seat, I looked at my silver stole that says valedictorian, and I thought, that's it? <laughs> what just happened? Why, why am I not feeling anything else? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't even know what I was expecting. A parade of balloons to drop? Or, or maybe I was hoping that all of my problems would fade away in comparison to this amazing achievement. But none of that happened, not even in my heart. I felt nothing. I was shocked. This was a huge problem for me, and I needed to figure out why. So here was my thought process. Working hard is good. It is, in fact, biblical. But it should not be done for the sole purpose of a goal sake at the expense of relationship with others. And here's the lesson. Have no regrets in the 16th second. Nothing is more important than your healthy relationships. Nothing. Not your goals, not your successes. And here's why. Relationships are where we get to influence, impact, and change people's lives. Your life cannot be meaningful without them. And we are put on this earth by our creator, and we all have a purpose to advance God's kingdom that all may be saved. Now how we all go about that, that's what's different. It's different in what college we choose, who we marry, and what career we choose. It's different in the triumphs and tragedies that come upon us. But in all those things, new relationships are being formed. As you live your life on this earth, there is no greater good than you can do for a person than to love them so much that you point them to Jesus Christ but first, he should be your first relationship that you cannot neglect. And I want you to know, I have been here at TKA for 14 years, and I love this school, and I love all of you, my classmates. And tonight, I am imploring you, if you have not begun that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, just do it. There is no better way to start something new and close a chapter of your life than with him. That 16th second, he realized that his work still faded away. He can be proud in his accomplishments and he may be able to celebrate that later on in life, but he remembers who his hope is in. His hope is in Jesus Christ. So this week, as we come out of quarantine and we enter into our summer, you may look and see some accomplishments in your grades, your plans, your successes, and it's okay to feel joy in those. But all of these things are gifts from God. And as Paul said in Galatians, we shouldn't boast in anything except Christ. I hope you enjoyed this live stream with us today. I hope that, that God is working through your life, even through this difficult time. But I want you to know that if there's anything that, that we can do to help you in your walk, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We want to make sure that, uh, that you are still engaging in God's word and going uh, the distance when it comes to following after Christ. Thank you, guys. We love you.